I just got off of a long, fun morning chat with my pal, Kathy, and we were talking about an experience that I had at a summer camp in upstate New York. It's a summer camp for adults created by Jonathan Field and his lovely wife, Stephanie. You may have heard of the podcast, The Good Life Project. Anyway, we gathered for a long weekend and listened to speakers that were business related, that were inspirational. We had classes that were around painting, tie-dye, writing, You could create your own menu of experiences based on what you needed in the moment. And somewhere in there, I came to the realization that I had, for all of my life, been confusing the word creativity with artistry. And I realized that I wanted to experiment a little bit more with my own creativity because people used to always say to me, you're so creative. And it just landed flat with me. So I decided to sign up for this mala making class, you know, the prayer beads. And I walk into this beautiful glass room in the middle of the woods and there are all of the beads are set out and this wonderful gal was teaching us how to go about making our malas. And this is really embarrassing, but I was so overwhelmed with trying to do it right and trying to get it beautiful that I sat in the corner and cried. And I can laugh about it now, but It wasn't funny at the time. It was extremely triggering. And needless to say, I left the class without my mala. The reason I was telling Kathy this was because I was learning how to make necklaces. I was in Florida last winter, and I had told my friend Gail, I just want to buy a beautiful necklace. That's all I want to buy while I'm in Florida. And we finally found my store, and I was trying on all these necklaces. And it dawned on me that maybe I wanted to try to make one myself. And I leaned over to Gail and I whispered in her ear, don't let me buy anything. And that thought stayed with me and I came back to New York and I wanted to go to the gem store down near Union Square. And then again, I got all up in my head about getting it right and I didn't know anything about gemstones and I started Googling gemstones and how could I go in there and be so ignorant? And I thought to myself, Constance, stop it. This is not about knowing or getting it right. It's like fragrance. You need to smell it and feel it. And see what speaks to you and be in the moment and choose what's calling your heart. And I forced myself to go down to the store. And of course, I left with all these beautiful gemstones. I didn't know the name of them and it didn't matter. I loved them. Some were very expensive and some were the cheapest thing on the table. Sure enough, I came home and put my bag away and never looked again until one night, late at night, I said, let me get that bag out. And I laid out a group of stones on a little black table that I have. And I looked down and I just marveled at my own creation. The stones weren't strung together, but they were laid out so beautifully. I was inspired to try. And I got into this whole underbelly of New York City that I had never known before. It's called the Diamond District. It's now actually just one street. That's where all of the sellers of watches and old jewelry and new jewelry and It's a really exciting, bustling street. Up above the stores that are on the ground level are all the people that make and clean and reset and redesign and repair jewelry. And I loved it. It reminded me of when I was in Italy trying to teach myself how to cook. They don't have recipes in Italy. You have to just wing it and figure it out. And I remember going back over and over to the market and saying, Signora, how do you make this rice? How do you make that roast? How do you make that sauce? And I taught myself Just like I was teaching myself how to make the jewelry, I taught myself by asking questions and going back over and over again. It was so much fun. I was sharing this with Kathy on the phone this morning that I loved what I made so much, it truly didn't matter what anybody thought. I was sharing all these photos and I was so proud of myself. And it was the first time in many, many years that I had created something for myself just because. And in sharing them, I truly wasn't looking for approval. And I was telling her about Dear Constance, and I said, I want to bring that sense of joy and trial and error. I want to find what lights me up, and I want to be okay with whoever listens in. This isn't about designing something to get accolades. It's about being messy and experimental. It's about being creative and finding my voice. So I'm so happy that you've found Dear Constance. Sharing this story about making the necklaces begs the question, what are you doing in your life that is 
messy and new and creative that requires that you show up with a beginner's mind. And that hopefully brings you joy the way making this for you brings me joy. I'm just loving this whole process of teaching myself how to make audiograms, how to edit, how to be okay with my garbled language. It's fun. That's all for now. Until next time, from my heart to yours.